Podcast friends, check out my upcoming show list to see if your city is on my tour. And if not, leave a comment for where I should go next. It is so important to be consistent in your parenting. Do you guys know this? Are you aware of this? It is so important. Do you have any idea the problems that you are causing with your children if you are not consistent in your parenting? I was just reading a book about this. It was a parenting book I came across and they were just talking about, man, consistency is the key. And I was thinking, man, I so agree. Sometimes I am a little inconsistent, but if these parenting experts who who tell us to be consistent are willing to come on over to my house with 10 <laughs> full-time employees and an eight ball of cocaine, then <laughs> I will be the most consistent parent you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. It'll be incredible. Caitlin, <laughs> am I just killing myself in the YouTube algorithm straight out of the can you oh, say absolutely. can you say eight ball of cocaine? Uh, on YouTube. Definitely not kid friendly. <laughs> okay, but, yeah, but listen, how do I talk to the algorithm and say I'm not selling cocaine? I'm not doing cocaine, I'm not promoting cocaine. I'm only suggesting. <laughs> I'm just saying that that's what it would take for me to be consistent. Okay, so now we have ensured that this episode will not get more than 100 views on YouTube. <laughs> but I do have an exciting announcement. You don't know this, Caitlin. Uh-oh. I registered a URL because I was tired of not knowing how to tell you guys how to find my YouTube channel. Caitlin, test this out. If you go to jfonyoutube.com, you will see my channel and you'll see this episode with its 90 views because the algorithm is like, this is a drug lord. This is El Chapo's <laughs> channel, all this coke talk straight out of the gate. If the, No, they, just the URL. Just go to jfonyoutube.com. Just like a website. I did a redirect. I just did this like 10 minutes. I used to be a web developer. If this doesn't go to my YouTube channel. Oh, oh my God, it, it does. does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's, okay, guys. I used to be a web developer. So I do <laughs> these kind of things. It's so just, if you want to see something that is so legit, go to JF on YouTube.com and you'll be like, how do these videos have no views? Because this is a great channel. And then you'll hear the words that come out of my mouth and you'll be like, well, <laughs> we might have some ideas of how this these videos have no views um so uh that is the main topic we have talked about consistency before this is not a new topic here on this fine quality program however there is a new dimension on it that i want to share that relates back to how i'm always telling you you have to be a leader whether you are a parent or not whether you want to be a leader or not too bad you live in a villageless society. You live in utter isolation compared to what any of your ancestors had. Therefore, you have to be an, a leader in the way that none of your ancestors did. This is a new thing in modern life. So we're going to talk about that. And we are also going to talk about the idea of having a brand as a parent. A friend of mine said this to me today. I, I, I did something that was kind of funny. And I sent her a screenshot of it, which I will share with you guys. And she said, wow, that is really your parenting brand. And I thought that's kind of an interesting thing. If you identify and articulate what your brand of parenting is, I think it will actually help you relax quite a bit. I think it will will really help you lean into parenting and understand what love languages you will excel at. And what love languages your kid's just going to have to miss out on. (laughs) Like having a beautiful, tidy home that is very organized and everything is labeled with a label maker that has fancy fonts. That is a love language. That's a beautiful, lovely thing to do in your home. My kids will never know that experience. (laughs) They will never know. Right before we recorded this, I was walking out of my house and I looked at the trash can and it was so disgusting it was you know obviously you can't shut the lid or anything it's piling over and i i shouldn't say this i i don't mean to gross you guys out you know what i'm not going to i don't want to i don't want to gross you guys out i just saw something in the trash can 
And I was questioning what its identity was. <laughs> and it definitely came out of some body orifice. <laughs> I just didn't know which one. Let's leave it. Can we leave it at that? We'll leave yeah. it at that. We'll leave it at that. Um, my, so look, it's a love language. You you moms who have these beautiful homes that, you know, things are labeled and they're organized and it's tidy. I mean, <laughs> we had a map. <laughs> we had a, look, this is the pros and cons right here. We had a map of where my children had been because... One of the pros of having a mother with a brain like this one is I'm always doing crazy things and that leads to the family traveling a lot. I am the parent that I've told you guys about the time a while back. I went into my older daughter's room and just said, hey, do you want to go to L.A.? And they said, when? And I said, well, we need to leave tomorrow morning, actually, if we're going. (laughs) Like, that's the kind of house they live in. Um, Downside is, so we did a map that was like, we'd put little pins in all the places we went. Okay, well then, first of all, my kids got a little out of control and some of the little kids started putting pins just wherever. (laughs) And it made me so frustrated when they were like, when were we in Jackson Hole, Wyoming? I was like, oh, it was when you were little. You don't remember. Because I was too angry to be like, (laughs) no, we've never been there, but I have no control over this house. So people keep putting random pins in the stupid board. I, I was like, yeah, it's great. Great times. Uh, we didn't take any pictures. But I was just off my phone because I believe in like life balance. So that's why we don't have any pictures of the big trip to Jackson Hole. So then it became a board of random pins in random cities that have nothing to do with our family. So, so that was that board taking up a lot of space in our living room. Then it fell down because someone threw something against the wall and the vibratory refractions Caused the whole thing to fall down. I did not deal with that board. I mean, it had to have been eight months. And we were entertaining. We would have people over. We would do a dinner. And I just didn't see it because I have very severe ADHD. (laughs) And uh, I I just didn't see it. It didn't really exist to me. I live in my head. The real world is not fully real to me. Like, dissociation is a lifestyle for me like <laughs> I'm never not dissociated you know so it's I, it was like eight or nine months and I was like oh look at that trash you know corner I actually looked back at pictures on my phone I'm like that that fell down a lot that's been almost a year and I haven't done with it dealt with it so pros and cons that's that is my mom brand I have the mom brand where sometimes you go to LA on 14 hours notice but um the fun family vacation memory board turns into a pins and random cities memory board. It falls down. It breaks. Your house is trashed. There is all sorts of bodily orifice fluids in the trash can that no one has changed. (laughs) And no one has dealt with that random pin board that fell down for eight months. Pros and cons. (laughs) And if you know your brand, you can, you can, uh, you can relax. And this is, they actually give, companies this advice they give companies this advice and we'll talk about that more in a minute but that that they say don't you can't just have your brand in your head you can't just be like yeah I kind of know what our soda company is about no you have to write it down and refer to it and I think that you need to do this as parents as well let me pause to introduce this show how about that my name is Jen Fulweiler I am heading out on my fall 2023 tour very soon I'm going to so many fun places I'm going to New York Pittsburgh Las Vegas DC Philadelphia Boston Dallas San Antonio Salt Lake City Ponte Vedra Beach Orlando in Atlanta gosh what's the I wish I had an easy way to remember the website Jen Fulweiler is hitting the road on the maternal instinct tour so watch where she goes just go Best jingle in the world. Thank you very much. So this is the Jen Fulweiler (laughs) Show. I'm your host, Jen Fulweiler. I am a stand-up comic, best-selling author, and mom of six. I had six babies in eight years. No twins. I really did. I am in Austin, Texas, and this is the podcast where you learn the art of the village 
hustle. That is being a hot girl girl boss who knows that love and family and the community are the foundations of all true success. Caitlin White is our incredible producer, and we publish new episodes every Wednesday morning without fail. We also have a Patreon where we leave the camera running after each episode, and we do an after party where we kind of cut loose, talk about behind the scenes things. So that is the after party you get at one level. We also have the village hustle level on Patreon. It's a little more. And with that, you get the after party stuff. But then you also get get ready with me videos where I'm getting ready and I'm sharing life tips and specific business problems that I'm resolving. So you're learning recipes and makeup and how I do my makeup and hair and all that. And um, while I am talking about things that I am dealing with. It's a lot of fun. That that village hustle level has really become my happy place. So um, I, I'm really, really enjoying it. I love doing that kind of content. So patreon.com slash this is Jen, where is where you can sign up for that. And this and the tour link and the YouTube link and all of that is in the show notes. So just look at the show notes for this episode and you will see that link and I, I, I really, I can't believe that that YouTube link works. That's what yeah, is it? That's again? amazing. <laughs> JF J- on YouTube. Yeah. Dot com. JF on YouTube. <laughs> dot com. Listen, the lesser podcasters, <laughs> the lesser podcasters are just like, look me up on YouTube in five minutes. I registered that <laughs> and I redirected it. So see, being a web developer has its, it has its benefits to have that background. Okay. So let's jump into it. So businesses are always told you need to know your brand. This is, you need to know your brand, blah, blah, blah. Um, So what a lot of people do, and I'm absolutely not talking to business owners here. I am about to make a a great analogy for life. (laughs) So what a lot of business owners do when they are told to know their brand, they kind of think, well, yeah, it's in my head. I mean, I, I know, like I know our brand. So let's say you're launching a line of soda companies and they say, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of know my brand. Well, is your soda, is this a, is it like Red Bull with a little meth? And oh my God, I, I, I have to change my ways now that I'm on YouTube. Red Bull with a little extra caffeine and I have to stop. Okay. Um, is, is it like, you know, is, is it an energy drink? Is it something that if your lifestyle is like, Literally every day after my ice bath, I jump on my jet ski and then I immediately go snowboarding because the jet ski, it's going across like a glacier. It's it's a cold water <laughs> jet ski. Um, and then I go snowboarding and then I go skydiving. Is it that kind of soda or is this like a crystal, you know, you're sitting by a lake like the clear, um, La Croix, like that. So is it is it light? Is it refreshing? Is it the kind of thing that women who are naturally skinny and are like, well, personally, I just cut back a little bit and I lost 10 pounds. Like, is it <laughs> is it like that? Is that where your brand is? Is that how you position yourself? Or is it like Coca-Cola? Like it's a classic soda. You know, it, it will give you diabetes and <laughs> shut down a few vital organs, but you won't even care because it tastes so refreshing. So <laughs> and it's full of high fructose corn syrup and, and all of that. Uh, it Which one is it? And a lot of times people think they know. They think they know. And then a consultant comes in. People, I'm not kidding, guys. People get paid like $300 an hour for this. Mm-hmm. Confirmed. My, I have friends who do this. Mm-hmm. They get paid $300 an hour to walk into a business and say, okay, so you think you know your brand? Write it down. Write it down right now. What what position do you have in the marketplace? Well, Village Hustle friends, um, I'm about to be a $300 an hour consultant for you for free. How is this podcast free? We, we don't know. I mean, I'm adding thousands of dollars of value to your life right now. Um, so uh, these consultants will sit down and say, well, okay, tell us the brand of your beverage how do you how would you compare to coca-cola how would you compare to la croix how would you compare to the red bull but are what are what are your pros and cons against those kinds of beverages and and then people who think they know suddenly they're freezing up they're like Ugh, well okay i mean it seemed like i knew but well now that i think about it like i don't know and so it it, it actually takes a while to write it down i really encourage you 
I really encourage you to do this. Uh, Get out your journal app. If you've been listening to this podcast any amount of time, you do have some kind of journal app, even if it's (laughs) notes app on your iPhone. Um, Get out your journal app and write down what your brand would be as a parent. For those of you who are not parents, again, lots of uh, college students, single young men, um, love that. You guys can do this too. It, It could be just for your personality, how you fit in your social groups. But- mainly guiding moms here on this. Okay. So think about what kind, what brand of mom would you be? Are you Red Bull? Are you Coca-Cola? I'm absinthe. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's illegal in most countries. Hemingway or somebody used to do it. It causes <laughs> massive hallucinations. <laughs> literally, God, I actually, I say, I can't think of a better analogy. That is literally my parenting brand. Um, texting my kids memes at 4 a.m. Followed up with a meme of like, hey guys, I can't get up with you tomorrow morning. So I assume you can all make it to school. But I kind of outed myself that I was doing nothing productive, that I sent them a stupid meme, you know, timestamp 3.38 a.m., and then 4, 10 a.m., like, hey, guys, you're on your own for school. I really can't get up tomorrow morning. Um, I'm, I'm the absinthe, you know, of, of parenting brands. Um, and if you're having trouble identifying it, think of this. This is a really fun exercise. Um, think, call to mind movies that you like, hopefully light movie, kind of light movies. Now, imagine that you were to be cast in a movie and your cast more or less is who you are, maybe a little bit more intense just to, to get a good character there, what kind of character would you be? So would you be someone in like the movie Animal House, you're wild and crazy, you're always starting a party, or would you be someone in um, like a more serious movie? Are you kind of a more serious bookish person? Would you be cast as a librarian? Maybe actually one of my friends, she is she is very literary. She's always reading a book. She reads the most boring books that were written in the 1800s before they had word processors. Uh, oh, tangent alert. Tangent. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just have to say this. You know what I realized? Books fundamentally changed before the word processor, after the word processor, because authors could go back and very easily delete, like, wow, I didn't need to say those five paragraphs. But when it was all handwritten or on typewriter, it was much harder to edit. So you have these very rambling books. And I've realized I I, I, I can't. I, and I know it's like, that's all of classic literature. I mean, that is the canon of Western civilization. I can't read it because they needed, they, they needed word processors to take out like, okay, we didn't need seven paragraphs on that tree. So next time someone makes you feel bad because you're not reading classic literature, just say, yeah, I don't, I don't read books that were written before the <laughs> invention of the word processor. Okay. That was a massive tangent. So <laughs> my friend, a friend, a mom friend of mine would be cast as a librarian she's she's a little bit quiet she's highly educated reads all the time reads classic you know bronte all of that um so that that would be her mom brand is that librarian brand i actually in this studio caitlin asked me the other day why i have a poster for the movie (laughs) caddyshack and she was like by the way we don't have any other decorations up in here that's me i put up one decoration badly with tacks. You know, it's not <laughs> framed. It's just tacked up. No other decorations because I didn't finish that project. Uh, and uh, the reason it's up. Great. I have something in my liver right now. This is amazing. Um, <laughs> the reason that that poster is up there is because it reminds me of my mom brand and frankly, just my brand for life. When I did this exercise of asking what movie would I be in and how would I be cast? I thought, man, I would fit right in with the movie Caddyshack. It's people who like to hang out in nice places. Like, not that I have the money for it, but I like to hang out in places like country clubs. I mean, you know, we're members of a yacht club. Like, we're members of the Yale Club. Where I mean, it's... It's very hard to make the case that I don't have money, but I don't just because we're members of a yacht club and the Yale club. I swear I'm not rich. I'm not. I will be soon. I'm not. Uh, But I mean, let's face it. It is, you know, I'm kind of known for like, 
I only stay at the Yale Club <laughs> when I'm in New York. So there's that vibe. Um, and uh, and that the movie Caddyshack is about people who are, they're country club kind of people, but they're very eccentric. They're, they're crazy. They drink too much. Like they, they place wild bets where they bet too much money on stuff. And so I just thought that I could see myself playing a character in the movie Caddyshack. And frankly, that informs my parenting that informs <laughs> my public presence it just it just helps me to have that poster so honestly and this can this can be a little inside joke with yourself you don't even have to tell your spouse or anyone you know why you're doing this but if you can identify that movie that yeah you could kind of see yourself fitting into that movie and you know what character you would play and you could imagine yourself walking into that scene and having this dialogue and you know, would you be shy and retiring or would you be bold and loud and offending people? J- just imagine that character in that scene and that movie. Order a-, a poster of that movie. Order the movie poster. You can even get uh, postcard size movie posters, small, so you can just keep it in a on your bedside table or in a paper journal or something. You would be surprised how much fun it will bring to your life and then also peace because it reminds you that you have a brand you have a character and like all great brands they're not good at everything that's the whole thing with the brand you do, i mean think of the brands you love you know gucci is not good at changing your oil they're, they they don't do everything they're about making you look beautiful and giving you luxury products that make you look like someone who who owns luxury products. They elevate your life. That's what Gucci does. Whereas your local oil change shop has a different brand. They're not trying to be about luxury. They're trying to be about helping your car work. And even, again, so does Coca-Cola. You know, maybe not great at keeping you alive, but great <laughs> at helping you give you a little pep in your step. Have you feel refreshed when you need when you need something refreshing on on a hot day? So... This is this is what we need to I, I think this is a great way to frame your life and your decisions and to help you with guilt. We've been talking about this. This has been sort of an unintentional series for the past few podcast episodes. Letting go of guilt by owning your strengths and owning your weaknesses. And, and I'm going to give you an example that a screenshot that I, I sent of a text I sent to my family really sums up all that for me. And maybe by seeing my example, it will help you as well. And for the skeptics, for the people who would say, this seems like a lot, you know, my grandmother and my great grandmother and all of these women for generations before me, they didn't have to know their brand. They didn't have to have a picture from you know, the local moving picture screen or whatever to inspire them in their parenting. They just did it. To that, I would say, yes, absolutely. People, I don't think people had to do these kind of thought exercises in the past because, again, hit, hit, the, hit, hit the button for when I'm going to make the point I always make, but I'll never stop making it because people have to, yes, yes, people have to get this through their heads. Yeah, yeah, they didn't need to know their brands because you know what? Your brand used to be handed to you by your village. When, let me tell you, if you lived in my part of Texas in the 1800s, and, and my ancestors did, they were, they were the crazy white people who came out here when no one had any business doing that. There was a, a very <laughs> clear, it's so insane. I mean, seriously, you look at their gravestones and it's like, yeah, everyone died at age 33. Like, and that's <laughs> not a shocker. Um, so you, if, like, if I were to have lived back then, oh, man, I, I would have died at age 20, <laughs> happily, happily. I would have been like, no air conditioner up in this hellscape. Like, just I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, I would have been one of those delicate, like, she just passed away of the, of the, what, what did they call it? The vapes or something. I don't know. They had like these old fashioned words when people just randomly died. That would have been me for sure. I would have been like, I don't want one more, Forget it. one more day over here. So if you were a mom in that time when my ancestors were around, let me tell you, your brand was that you were an upstanding Methodist woman 
and um, you you were raising upstanding Methodist children, and you were a a, a good wife, but also kind of a tough woman. You know, shotgun owning. Oh God, YouTube's oh, gonna yeah. okay. I got to, no, <laughs> guns, drugs, excellent, good. All, can we cover um, all three? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and, and I mean, these were these were women. You know, they had a reputation for being pretty tough, but um, you know, just really kind of that upstanding Methodist woman who is raising upstanding Methodist children kind of vibe. And whether you wanted it to be or not, that was your brand. Congratulations. You ran your farm very well. You did canned goods. I mean, that that was just the culture that my people came from in Texas. And if you wanted any kind of acceptance into society, you kind of had to fit that brand. But now, for better or worse, we don't live in communities. We, we, don't, we don't live in villages. Now, one of the upsides is you have a little bit more independence. Anyone who's ever lived in a small town, something close to a village, knows there are many wonderful advantages, great support system, and all of that. One of the disadvantages is your brand is kind of handed to you. It's a, little, it's a little harder to break out of that shell. So that is why, yeah, your, your grandmother did not have to do any of these thought exercises, but you do. So here's an example of someone who knows their brand. Now, Caitlin, before you put it out, don't put it up just yet. Mm-hmm. You can see it you'll, in a minute. You'll be able to actually see the screenshot on YouTube. Um, so one, uh, because I kind of know my brand as a mom, one of the things I, I do know is that household stuff is a terrible, terrible struggle for me. I I can't, guys. Seriously, I can't. There are a couple things I'm good at. Dishes I'm actually fine with, oddly enough. And there has to be something else, but that, <laughs> I, it's, none of it's coming to mind. Here are some stats. Um, I have not operated a vacuum cleaner I mean, seriously, in 15 years. I'm not uh-huh. kidding. No, I haven't. I'm so no. jealous. <laughs> no, no, because we have housekeepers. And again, I'm not rich just because, you know, we're members of the Yacht Club and the Yale Club and I have housekeepers. No, that we had housekeepers when when the accounts were overdrawn every month. It's I just look at it like it's like a grocery. Exp- I mean, and, and my husband actually agreed. He's like, yeah, you can't. You just can't. Yeah, no, it's true. So they vacuum. Um, and, uh, laundry for a long time, my mom, God bless her. She, she was kind of critical of the way I did the kids laundry because this brain, I just couldn't, I I would just, if it was going to get done, I would just kind of throw it all in. It was killing her. So she did the kids laundry for a while. Greatest gift I ever got in my life. And now they all have to do their own laundry. I, I can't, it's, it's not even a want thing. They know I would love to help them in any way I can. I, I can't, I just truly cannot, I cannot, I can't do laundry. So they all do their own laundry. So, um, yeah, I haven't done like the kids laundry in a long time because I just, I can't, I can't, my brain doesn't work. So, um, (laughs) there are really, actually it's probably most things in the house I don't do, but so again, brand, um, I'm kind of the, the like entrepreneur businessy, um, crazy stand-up comic mom. That is kind of my that is my brand. So again, spontaneous trips to LA, fun. Th- it's it, my kids think it's fun. I know a lot of famous comedians. They think that's fun. Um, it's fun. You know, they've got this podcast studio if they want to take pictures with their friends or whatever. So th- there are a lot of advantages to that. But uh, it, and one of them is that because I run a business. I'm actually pretty good at running my house like a business. So can I sweep? Uh, not really. It's just, no, nah, it's not for me. It's just not for me. Um, can I do laundry? No, no. It's, again, not to my taste. It's not part of my personal lifestyle. <laughs> um, can I Can I make beds? That's going to be a no, also a no. Also a no. That's probably the best value we ever got of housekeepers. They changed the sheets. If my housekeepers did not change our sheets. We would not have had clean sheets since 2012. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't think I could have done it. I, I really don't. So all of that, you know, not so much for me, but making money to pay for people to change our sheets and help us out in those ways, um, that is something I'm medium good at <laughs> working on that. I, I'm, I'm medium on that. But one thing I'm very good at 
is motivating the family. And and I'm really referring to my kids because my, my husband is a very tidy, neat, organized, on the ball person. But motivating the family, the kids, to have a great chore system that really makes sense and is easy for everyone and enforcing it in a way that doesn't cause a lot of tension and gets them to be doing all the work they need to do to actually keep the house pretty nice, except for whatever was happening with our trash can earlier today. <laughs> but, you know, I actually keep the house in pretty good shape. And I have to say, can we not admit that's kind of a skill? That's mm-hmm. actually kind that's a pretty that's a pretty decent skill, right? Oh yeah. To be able to motivate six children, well five now that my my oldest is at college, but up until a couple of weeks ago it was six children. So to be able to motivate six children to do all these different chores and do them on time and not blow them off, even though we also expect them to get basically straight A's, um, that is a skill. And see, I wouldn't recognize that if I were busy beating myself up that I don't have other women's love languages, that I have a brain that just can't, it cannot with all this housework. Um, If I were beating myself up about that, I would have never discovered that I'm actually pretty good at management and organization, the, d- working with people, motivating people, and and again, doing it in a positive way, not in mm-hmm. a, I'm going to yell, I'm going to scream at people, but, but actually getting people to be happy about what I'm proposing. That's pretty cool that I, I recognize that that's part of my brand. And the upshot is I don't have to vacuum. <laughs> so, hey. All right. So here is uh, those of you watching on YouTube can see. Um, This is a screenshot that I sent to the family just a few days ago, or was it, it might might have been yesterday. So here's what it says. Uh, I said, so first of all, we have, you guys know we do zones, meaning um, each kid has an area of the house that that they quote unquote own, meaning it that is that is your area, that is your job to keep it clean. This was my husband's insight. This is actually a great a great way to do family chores. Um, what a lot of parents do is they rotate their kids' tasks so that they can take turns. Not every kid has the bathroom every week or whatever. Uh, the problem is that as a manager, as a leader. That makes it hard to enforce because you are stressed and busy because you have an adult life that you are living. And so let's say you walk by the living room and it's a mess. And rather than being able to instantly know whose job that was and go tell them about it, then you have to look up, okay, where is it on the app? Okay, this is so-and-so's. That that uses mental energy that you should not be using. So we have permanent zones if any of the kids have a problem with their zone or they think they're doing too much work they're welcome to talk to us about it we're always open to discussion on that but we spent a long a long time figuring out a zone system that is fair for example my daughter who cleans both cats litter boxes she doesn't have to do anything else and everyone (laughs) is fine with that they're like fine (laughs) like if you will just change these litter boxes we will do everything else we couldn't care less it's totally fine and then everyone has a has a dish day one day of the week where for that whole day it is on them to do dishes and that never changes so when it's Tuesday it's this kid's dish day when it's Wednesday it's this kid's dish day so that way I can know oh wait hang on dishes didn't get done okay let's see it's Wednesday and then I immediately know who I need to talk to about that okay so I've started writing this all down or I printing it out on paper lists that they need to that they need to check off and there, there was a little bit of an issue with that getting blown off. And I will say, since we're, we're public, we're on YouTube, I want to <laughs> emphasize my kids are great. They're very helpful. They're just busy. I mean, they have a lot going on with school. One of my daughters, I'm so proud. Did I tell you this, Caitlin? No. She, she is the mascot at her high school. She's the what? mascot this year. That's I'm amazing. so proud. That's so exciting. I'm going to every football game when I'm in town. I think it's so amazing. So look, they're busy. They're busy. I get it. I'm not... I'm not mad. It's not like I'm not understanding that they can't do these lists, but it can't happen. Like our our house cannot descend into chaos. So I sent this text. You can read it on YouTube, but those of you on the audio, I'll read it for you. I said, exciting news. 
something really fun is happening this week. Sparkle emoji. (laughs) I'm going to start taking away phones when you guys blow off your lists. It is fine if you are overwhelmed and want to discuss changing your tasks. No problem. The issue is when you just don't do it and you don't tell us you can't do it. That starts a chain reaction of chaos that impacts the entire house. I am excited about this opportunity to make our home a clean place that is pleasant to be in. (laughs) Applause, (laughs) Caitlin. (laughs) Applause. I love it. All right, you can take the screen off. Okay, so Uh. that is that came about because I, I, I was feeling discouraged. I was feeling down on myself that the house was really kind of getting out of control. I just felt like as a leader, this is on me. It's really getting messy. It's getting pretty filthy. Dishes are piling up and up and up. And I was feeling very discouraged because I had the misfortune of stopping by someone else's house And it was like, you know, in the movies when they walk into heaven and it's harps are playing and they're angels and everything's (laughs) white and pure and perfect. That was this woman's house. I mean, everything was so perfect. And I thought, man, my kids would have such better lives if they didn't live in the (laughs) just trash compactor septic tank, you know, that we live in. I I was feeling really bad about it. But then I remembered my brand. I am the eccentric entertainer, entrepreneur, mom. That's me. And when that's a great brand, just like the the lady whose house I stopped by. She she doesn't have a job outside the home. She she works herself to the bone, like making her house beautiful. It's such a blessing to her family. I mean, her family walks in and there's like a new scent she's trying out and a new picture has been (laughs) replaced on the gallery wall. And there's a a new uh, throw rug or or blanket, a a throw blanket that just perfectly accents the couch. She also has, um, she has heater blankets in the winter, like the plug-in oh, heater nice. blankets <laughs> that are over her couch so that guests might, co- you know, cozy up with, with the heated blanket. She spends hours every day working on this. It is her blue flame. It is what she was meant to do. So her brand is the kind of Martha Stewart, quote unquote, perfect homemaker mom. That is a great brand. Martha Stewart, homemaker mom, is a fantastic brand. Librarian, introverted, bookish, kind of absent-minded professor mom is a great brand. Entertainer, entrepreneur, scatterbrained mom is, that's a great brand. Or also sporty mom. You know, the mom who keeps the house kind of clean. It's not super decorated, but man, she is out at the ball game. She's got all these kids in four different sports. She's on a softball team. She coaches a soccer team. That's a great brand. Mm Mm-hmm. These are all great brands. I mean, think about it. Really iconic. I would love to watch a movie with those characters, wouldn't you? If they did a new show like Desperate Housewives or something that is a bunch of women all on the same block. Think about this. How boring would it be if they all had the Suzy Homemaker brand? It's a great brand, but it would just get kind of boring. If all of these moms in this TV show, all of them, their love language is that they're great cooks and their house looks beautiful and they they keep it really clean. And yep, there's 10 of them. And that's that's them. That's them on the <laughs> street. It's like, no, I want the chain smoking mom who <laughs> she grew up in a trailer and she cusses and she's got her Paps Blue ribbon and she but she tells it like it is and she loves her kids. And you know, someone uh she found out that her kid was being bullied at school really badly. And so she showed up at the bully's house and she punched the dad in the face. I mean, we want we want that woman. We want tough like trailer Tammy on the block. You know, we want her on the block. We want the sporty mom on the block. We want the quiet, introverted, absent-minded professor librarian (laughs) on the block. And also we want like the glam mom on the block. The one who's like, you know, she married Rich. um, She's super hot. And so she also has a beautiful house, but not as much because she's Susie Homemaker, but like because she married (laughs) into money and she went for old money. And um, so she's like just being hot all the time. She's like a lady who lunches. She has her uh, Prada bag, you know, and all that. So she's fun. She's fun to have on the block. Um... And then again, me, you know, entertainer, entrepreneur, crazy, scatterbrained mom. (laughs) Aren't these fun characters? It's a show I'd watch. Yeah. 
and you wouldn't watch the show where all the moms had the same love language no. for their families. You wouldn't watch, who wants to, I wouldn't watch that. You wouldn't watch that. Dear listener, <laughs> I am inviting you to our TV show. I am inviting you to our block. The only requirement is that you know your character. And of course, it can be a character who develops. That's another great thing about shows is that the characters develop. You see growth. You see them changing, hopefully for the better. Not on all shows, but <laughs> hopefully for the better. You see them changing and growing over the course of the show. But they start with some kind of character. So tell me. I know you guys talk out loud to this podcast, which I love, by the way. Uh, so just, we're having a conversation. I'm hanging out in your car or in your living room with you. Pause the podcast and just think out loud. Tell me, what character are you on the block? And make it fun. Nothing boring. Do not come at me with the, you know, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a good, simple mom. No. <laughs> what is quirky? <laughs> I mean, here's the, what, is, what is quirky about you? In order to do good character development, you do have to know your faults and you have to make them fun. Know your faults and make them fun. So honestly, let's say you know you're kind of uptight. You're kind of tightly wound. You just are. It's just how you are. You're a little bit controlling, a little bit of a helicopter parent. Let's start your character there. All right. She moves into the block. She is the brittle, fragile mom <laughs> who probably needs to be heavily medicated, but is not. And she's always flipping out about things. And she's like screaming because somebody left a fork on the table. Let's start with that character. That's a fun character. Maybe not always for the kids, but like <laughs> it's kind of a fun character. And just look at it like, all right, you'll do some character development to relax a little bit, you know? Maybe this character starts taking edibles. I don't know. <laughs> While I'm at 100 views on YouTube, let's just say it all. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But maybe this character does learn how to relax in some some way or another. And, and, and we'll watch her grow and change on the block. But you actually, you really have to start with your flaws in order to develop this character and in order to know your mom brand. Again, when they first invented Red Bull, they, they probably started with, okay, what is this not? This is not an alternative to having a green smoothie. It's not a light, nice little non-caffeinated drink that you sip at 7 p.m. as you're watching the sunset. Like, it's not that for sure. This is when you're jumping off a mountain with a snowboard and you have a parachute on. Like, it's <laughs> that kind of drink. So s start with your flaws. Start with what you're terrible at and lean into it and go into that. Yeah, man, I am. I suck at that. Like, I'm terrible. Go into it. And then you will come out the other side with a great character for our block. You'll have a great character for our block. I We need to do some kind of forum where I ask you guys to send that in. You can leave a comment on YouTube. But I, I actually want to know. Now I'm really mm -hmm. curious. Me we need too. To think, yeah, we need to. I want to know what your characters are. Oh, my gosh. That would be so much fun. Um, we should do an event where there's a cocktail party <gasps> and you dress up as your character. So it's yes. you, but taken to the nth degree. So I would show up in a feather boa, you know, with, <laughs> with diamond sunglasses on and like a massive fake gold dollar sign, you know, gold chains. Oh, Caitlin, we have to. Yes. Do. Listen, <laughs> when the comedy millions come in, that's the first thing we will do. We will do, we'll throw a cocktail party where you guys can show up and, and dress up as your character. So that is how that text got sent. And actually, guys, it, it has really helped. My house for the past few days, and, and even really before that, because we had the list system going, I just didn't have the enforcement. It has run like a well-oiled machine. We have five kids living at home. It is 1,900 square feet. This is not a big house. It's three bedrooms. We have a massive dog and a one-eyed cat. <laughs> um, and I'm, I am, I'm not great at keeping up with cooking. I'm okay with it, but not great. Terrible at keeping up with housework. It has been running like a well-oiled machine. At most points, it has actually been pretty tidy and in pretty good shape. Why? Because I figured out my brand. Because I figured out I'm actually really good at motivating people in a positive way. And I got this done 
without the kids being upset. We ended up having a fun and kind of funny conversation because of the way I phrased it in the group text that I sent out about it because I phrased it in a tongue in cheek, you know, this is great news way. (laughs) Everybody was laughing about it. But I had just said, you're losing your phone and and I never you you've heard in previous episodes I don't take I almost never take away phones um I mean basically never so that's a pretty big threat um I mean I I had just delivered a pretty big threat but because I knew my brand I knew I, I would find a way to deliver that in a fun way in a funny way and get it done get the thing enforced that needed to be enforced but do it in a way that actually left people laughing and connected to each other and in a pretty good mood. And sure enough, and boy, are they checking their lists. <laughs> yeah. And 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 actually on the first day that um, that we enforced it, I, um, I texted them when it was time to check their list and mark off what was done. I texted them and I said, um, I said, uh, happy phone takeaway if you don't do your <laughs> list day with a with a um, with like the little celebration emoji. <laughs> and 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 again, I also be again the business thing because I, I'm such a I, I'm so interested in the topic of business. I started with why I explained to them. I said, look, each of you have about five tasks, and there are five of you living at home, and so that is twenty five things per day, and then. Let's see. So 25 times seven is that is 175 items per week that if you guys are not keeping up with it, that means dad and I have to hold all that space in our heads. So this is the Mm -hmm. why. Start with why. It's like we can't do it. I was like, guys, look, do you want to be rich or not? Because I'm not going to (laughs) be able to make the comedy millions if I have to keep 175 tasks in my mind every single week. So listen, listen. Let me go make the comedy millions and do your lists, okay? And you own it. Like, I shouldn't have to remind you because I'm out there hustling. I'm on my grind. I'm on my grind set. I'm on my trillionaire grind set. (laughs) Um, So starting with why also helped. But the main point is that it ended up actually being a really great situation. And it was all because I knew my mom brand. And by the way, I have, I got this idea. My friend Leah Darrow, she's a mom business coach. She's so good. She does business classes and stuff. So good. I need to give her credit. This was her insight. You should follow her too. She's a former, she was on America's Next Top Model. And uh, so she's hot and smart. It, she also, <laughs> she also had six babies in eight years. So um, you should follow her. Leah Darrow, look her up on social media. She gave me the mom brand insight. And while, while I'm promoting things, Caitlin, I feel like people were skeptical when I said that they have to get on Brain FM with my code Gen F. Hang on one second on mm-hmm. that. With my code Gen F, that is Gen with one N, J E N F. When you sign up for Brain.FM, you get a some kind of discount if you use my code. Twenty percent, <laughs> I, I think. I think you get it's a good discount. Gen F is the code. Um, I keep telling you that my sanity and my career is due to this app. And and I was, I'm an evangelist for this, not just for you guys, but in my family, I was telling my kids about it. And so my son who went to college was feeling kind of stressed. And um, so I said, look, come home for the weekend. Let, let's, let's get you all set up. Let's de-stress. And one of the things I did, I took his phone. I downloaded the Brain FM app. I got him the premium plan. Would you believe I forgot to put in my own freaking <laughs> discount code? So I missed out on that commission because I'm a fool. Um, but I got him set up on that. Caitlin, show the first screenshot. Show the first screenshot. This is from my son. Caitlin, can you read the first line? Let, 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 let them hear it from someone else's voice. Okay, I'm going to say this as it's written. Yes. Brain.fm is the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. He goes on to say, not even Adderall is as productive as this. The focus is almost palpable. I don't know how anyone got anything done before this. That is my son. And this is, he didn't know I'd say it on the podcast. Also, I didn't ask him how it's going. I didn't ask him for his feedback. And you can see the actual screenshot that he sent on YouTube. I I didn't, I didn't ask. He was so excited about it that he independently sent this to me. He's studying engineering at Texas A&M University, very intense courses, 
And he is just like, Brain.fm is saving my career. Okay, show the second screenshot. So I was like, that's great. I'm so excited to hear that. He sends another text. He sends another text. Again, you can see it. Oh, oh, wait, what, what's my website? Did I, JF on YouTube.com. Yes. <laughs> that's where you can see it. Okay. He says, this Brain.fm app thing can't even be real at this point. I cannot excuse me, I cannot stress how much better this is than anything I have ever tried, including Adderall. Thank you so, 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 so much. So I'm just telling you, thank you, Caitlin, for the shot. Um, I'm just telling you, there is a link in the show notes to brain.fm, or you can go to their website or whatever. You can sign up, use the code GENF, J-E-N, F as in Frank. Well, I'm going to say F as in Fullweiler. J E N F as in Fullweiler. Um, use that code. You'll get a 20% discount. Or honestly, guys, whatever. Don't use my code. You can just go to the App Store and download it and whatever. And maybe there's a place to put in my code and maybe there's not. Just get the app. Just get the app. Because um, when you do your brainstorming session for when you are figuring out your brand when you just need to focus when uh, just anything anytime you need to get something done i use it for housework on the occasions that i do the dishes or or the few things that i contribute physically to this family um i have my noise canceling headphones i put on brain.fm focus sounds also if i'm blocked on something the app can count up if you want so it just goes on forever and and then you can work as long as you want but when I'm blocked on something and this is how my son uses it I set a timer you can choose any time so I might say um let's say it's a I have to clean something that I really do not want to clean I'll put on my noise canceling headphones I do I'll I'll set brain fm on focus music for 15 minutes and I tell myself I'm just going to work for 15 minutes that that's it that's it um and it has changed my life. When I'm doing work for my business, I do it, uh, I'll put it on, I'll set it for 40 minutes. And I say, okay, as long as this music is playing, I need to be working. No checking email, no social media, no nothing. If I hear the music, the focus music, it means that I need to be focusing. And the great thing about that is I used to set timers, but I am a very fragile person who is Mm -hmm. unfit to be (laughs) in this world. And so when the timer would go off, it would scare me to death. It would just startle me and it would break me out of my zone. So um, I love having that music. It just fades out when the timer's up. And then the great thing about that is I don't have to go fumble around with a timer. If I'm in the zone, I can just keep working Mm -hmm. so brain.fm the link is in the show notes if you use that link i think my code is already in there but the code is gen f if it asks for it it will absolutely change your life i just had to do that promo so we're kind of doing one long topic today it's not the usual intro topic and um end topic and I, i wanted to come back to this idea of being consistent in your discipline because this is a great extension of the mom brand topic. Some of us are not naturally good at that. Some some of us are we're just we're not consistent in our parenting. And first you kind of need to know your mom brand so that you can stop wasting time on things that exhaust you and start getting really really excellent on the things that are actually not too hard for you and you are actually pretty good at. So that's why we talked about the mom brand topic first. So now that you know that, in order to be, the the, the secret to dealing with your inconsistency in your parenting, whether it's inconsistency in discipline, inconsistency in checking their homework, inconsistency in any area, is to accept that this is normal. You know which parents are consistent in a villageless lifestyle? None of them. <laughs> Fictional parents. That's who. <laughs> Nobody's consistent without a village. If you live in a village, fine. Fine. If you live in an ancient kind of tribal village where you are not the sole caretaker for your kids, 
24 hours a day where they are running around with the other kids supervised by the older kids. You have a lot of information flow and camaraderie with the other women. You're, you're talking about raising kids and all that. The whole, the whole community, all the women of the tribe go to get the water at the same time. They wash the clothes together at the same time they prep the food. Yeah, it's pretty consistent. The other thing is in, in a village setting, because there is much more of a family feel, a lot of times other people will discipline your kids. And, and, and uh, I mean, a lot of Americans really rebel against that idea, as they should in our individualistic culture where we don't live in villages. It's wildly inappropriate. But if you live in this very, very small community where you are related to most of the people, you've all lived together your whole lives, everybody knows everybody, you know, if, if you're... If your aunt takes your kid aside and says, hey, I heard what you just said. Like, do not do that. That was so inappropriate. You're like, oh, thank God. Like, nice. <laughs> so you've got the village is disciplining your kids. And the village has very clear mores of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So there's also an incentive system that your kid will just not be able to thrive and get what they want in life if they go against that. So again, when you live in a traditional village, small community <coughs> culture, as all of your ancestors did, there ain't no kid announcing that they are a polyamorous atheist. <laughs> that couldn't happen in that kind of culture because it, that, it, that just wasn't accepted. And I'm not even saying that's a good thing. I think there was a lot of closed mindedness, xenophobia, just uh, there, that can lead to bad mindsets. I'm not saying that that was always a great thing, but for better or worse, your kids weren't going to pull any of that because the, the village would reject them for that. So the village had this set of standards and morals that you had to adhere to in order to be a member of the village. So you're you, just all of that work that we get stressed out about is, are, are my kids going to continue my values? And are, are they going to keep to our religion? It's like, that was kind of taken care of by your village. By the way, Caitlin, uh, I think I might be doing better in the YouTube algorithm now because I said polyamorous atheists. So yes. they're like, oh, oh, put this one. Bing, bing, bing. Put no this winner. on the homepage. Like, this is the content that we are here for. Yes. They're based in, you know, they're based in California. This is incredible. Like, we love this. So I'll just say that 50 more times. Um, so your village took care of a lot of the discipline and the moral upbringing of your kids so think about that think about that all of this energy that you put into making sure your kids have good character that they are doing what they need to do as part of their family chores and, and those sorts of contributions um following the religion doing the things that are whatever religion you're a part of that they're doing those things literally 80 percent of that was taken care of by the village in ancestral human times. So uh, the human brain was not designed for you to enforce all of this consistency. This is a, a nonsense standard that parenting experts hold you guys to. It's beyond dumb to think that somebody without a support system can be perfectly consistent and they're in the, in the faith formation and the discipline and the character building and checking their homework and making sure their clothes are perfectly clean and the house is ain't no way it's not gonna happen unless you are a marvel superhero <laughs> who's the uh, doctor time or whatever <laughs> benedict cumberbatch what's he what's bennett can you look that up caitlin what is his he's like a time lord i should know this unless you're terrible. that guy you don't i mean you're not going to be able to yet yeah, in Marvel. Your brain can't. It wasn't designed for it. It wasn't designed. Well, whatever. He was a doctor. It's Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Oh, why did um, I know that? It's so bad. Doctor, unless you have a, you know, you can bend time and space. <laughs> you know, <laughs> earlier in this episode, I said eight ball of cocaine. But also what would work <laughs> is if you can just create one of those glowing <laughs> balls that, connects one universe to another and bends time and gives you like five years into one day. I could well, then, that this morning. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah, you could have been consistent in your parenting, Caitlin. Yeah. So could I. 
Caitlin and I both, we could have crushed it in our parenting if we could just bend time. Well, let's do it all. If we had staff members and hard <laughs> drugs and bend time. Oh, yeah, we'd be we'd super be consistent. We'd be amazing. But if you're just, if you're a regular person who can't bend time, who is not on drugs, and who doesn't have 10 staff members, there is no way that you can be consistent. Your brain wasn't designed to do it without your village. So what you do is you accept the fact that consistency ain't happening. It ain't happening up in here. Not now, not ever. <laughs> and you optimize on it. That is what all great CEOs do. And you are a CEO if you are a parent. You are. I mean, think about it. You're the leader of your children. They think of you as being a leader. So you are. You're a leader. Whether you, you want to be or not, you are. And, and, and that is what all great leaders do. They accept the limitations that they are facing. If you are the CEO of United Airlines, it, you might wish that the laws of physics worked differently and you could create a plane that's shaped like a sphere, but you have to say, okay, the laws of physics <laughs> don't allow for that. So I, I need to work with what I have and optimize on it. And let's get back to canceling all Jen Fulweiler's flights. Like that's really our priority <laughs> is to make sure. We heard Jen Fowler was on this. Show. Yeah, yeah. Well, just make sure that she is talk. stuck in whatever city she's in. I mean, that is our priority here at United <laughs> Airlines. Um, that's what you do with any of these problems. Instead of listening to social media influencers and beating yourself up about the fact that you're not getting it done, you say, yeah, I can't get it done because this is asking too much of me. I can't, at least not with this brain, not with this mom <laughs> brand, I can't. So now I will optimize on the fact that I can't. So for example, with, with me, with the housekeeper thing, when we were as broke as we could have account overdrawn every month, we'd already gone through the savings. I really wanted those housekeepers because <laughs> I was like, I, I, I can't, I just can't keep up with this house. Well, that is one of the things that motivated me to start my writing career, which led me to write my first book. And I, I wrote multiple books, but my first book is about to hit 2000 reviews on Amazon, wow. which is a very exciting milestone. A lot of people have a lot of good things to say about it. A lot of people have said that it, it really helped them. What motivated me to write it is I wanted housekeepers. I was like, I need money. I need money. It's, it's this very like, it's called something other than God. It's, it's actually a very like deep and personal book about how I found faith after a life of atheism. But really like, guys, I just wanted housekeepers. Honestly, that is, I just, I needed, I just needed that. And, and so I wrote that in the midst of being broke and having six babies in eight years. Now it's helped a lot of people. And, and that all came from me not beating myself up and saying I'm a terrible person that I'm not vacuuming this floor and sweeping this floor. It's like, yeah, I just, I'm doing a lot of other things. Uh, this one's going to have to go. So I got to figure out a way to pay for these housekeepers. That's the key to consistency as a parent is to accept the fact that you're not going to be consistent because you can't, because you weren't meant to do this without a village and your brain cannot handle it and your brain will explode. If you try to do the job of a village, you are literally trying to do the job of like 70 people that, that you would have had if you lived 5,000 years ago. So don't push yourself into sanity. Be a good leader. Say, okay, I was meant to be raising these kids in a close-knit community where I have seven sisters and four brothers and all of their kids of various ages and my grandmothers live with us and they hold the newborn babies and my my cousins and my nieces help with the with the kind of toddler age kids and the other women in the village or they're helping with the I mean that's how you were meant to do it and and you don't have that so great there are actually some advantages to that again it, it's not it's not all perfect in village life. So there's some advantages to all the independence we have, but you just have to step up as a leader and optimize on it. If you are terrible at housekeeping, go make some money. I bet you're good at making money. Those of us who are terrible at housekeeping, <laughs> and oddly enough, we tend to be good at making money. We like it. It's fun. Um, whereas if you hate having jobs and making money and you want to live the soft life, as people talk about on TikTok, I love soft life stuff, so, and, <laughs> and you want to have a soft life for your family, lean into that 
and and just talk to your spouse about what you can do to continue to make their environment very conducive to them making money and like <laughs> feeling supported and you and, and and with discipline so i my specialty is that is the pr angle of discipline i will just deliver the worst news and the harshest penalties <laughs> but i'll do it in this funny way that people it's like they can't get upset because they're laughing. So that that's kind of my specialty. But there are a million other ways to do it. When when the kids were little and I had less of a sense of humor because <laughs> I was dying, I was dying. Um, and, I mean, again, I had four kids under age five, five kids under age six, six kids under age eight. I mean, it was insanity. And um, one of the ways I I worked around the fact that it was impossible to be consistent at, in my discipline as a parent is that I did shock and awe parenting. Shock and awe parenting is a great thing to keep in your back pocket for when you are just completely overwhelmed and you cannot find any more creative solutions <laughs> to your lack of consistency in your discipline. Shock and awe parenting is when you only do what you threaten to do about one in five times. <laughs> but, but... <laughs> When we hit that one time, it is memorable. It is very memorable. And and I don't mean anything like harsh with your kids. I don't mean anything that will have them on five different meds and talking to three different therapists when they're 50. I, I, I just mean like you're right in the middle of cooking and you shut it all down. You turn off the oven and you're like, this is the one. This is the one out of five. I got time today. So you know what? <laughs> I'll sit in the naughty corner with you. I'll sit in the timeout corner with you. And if we have to sit here for two hours and stare at a wall, and if I have to sit here with you for two hours and stare at a wall, I got time. <laughs> I've cleared off my calendar. We're not having a regular dinner tonight. <laughs> this is just all, This the, everything is off the table until this gets taken care of. Um, it is memorable. And honestly, it works pretty well. I have to say <laughs> shock and awe parenting worked pretty well for me. And as the kids got older, I would even tell them, I, I said a couple of times, I was sitting on the couch and this was such a hard time. I, w I was so overweight. Like it was kind of like hard to get off the couch <laughs> like, and usually pregnant also, but sometimes just overweight. And I was, you know, I was on the couch drinking a soda. I mean, I was a stereotype. I would literally be eating a family sized bag of chips to myself, drinking a soda. My hair just looked like trash. At one point, I actually forgot how to do makeup because it had been so long since I'd done it. And I said to one of the kids, they were probably six or seven at the time, and they, you know, they were fighting or, you know, making a mess. And, and I'd said, stop. And they didn't do it. They, you know, little kids, that's normal. They get in kind of a defiant space. And so I just kicked back on the couch and I said, you know, kid's name, kid. <laughs> I said, I'm going to tell you one more time to stop doing that. You and I both know that I am probably not going to enforce any punishment but but I'm thinking about it this might be the one <laughs> this might be the time that I do and if it is you will never forget it this will be a memorable afternoon for you <laughs> and and again that I'm I want to be very clear I'm not talking about physical threats or anything like that but just like <laughs> You know, maybe I'll put on a clown wig and scream a little bit. I mean, we, you, you know, be open minded. But I would actually say that to the kids. Like, let's just get it out there. I don't have the energy to be consistent. So what you guys are doing is you're spinning the roulette wheel. You're spinning the roulette wheel of mom consistency. And you just better hope that it lands on a good number. Because one day I'm going to have some time. And I'm going to deal with it in a real big way. And I have to say, guys, honestly, that's, you know, they, they eventually were kind of like, I don't, I don't want to spin the roulette wheel today because she actually did enforce it. It was like two weeks ago. But we're still thinking about that when like she actually did throw the TV remote across the backyard and nobody could find it and we couldn't watch <laughs> screens. And and then it was like the worst dinner ever because like she didn't have time to cook dinner because we were staring at a wall for two hours because that was mm -hmm. part of the discipline. 
And I mean, it really did get to the point where even even little kids were like, yeah, I don't want to I don't I don't want to spin the mom roulette wheel today. So that's the key, guys. The, it, stop beating yourself up about not being consistent. There's no way you can be consistent. That it's it's not no one expects that of you. It's totally impossible. All you have to do is embrace the fact that you have not been given the resources to be consistent and then optimize on your inconsistency. Boy, what a what a relatable podcast this is. I have catchphrases <laughs> like optimize on inconsistency. There you go. A nice multisyllabic phrase there. But really but know your know your mom brand, know your parent brand, or if you don't have kids, just know your personal brand. And, and and again, this applies to those of you who don't have kids. You won't be able to be consistent in every area. So optimize on it. Optimize on your inconsistency and go love your life. And get tickets to my comedy tour. JFcomedytour.com is where you get those tickets. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, join the Patreon. All of those links are in the show notes. Can't wait to see you over on Patreon. We're going to start the after party right now. And we will be back next week here on The Jen Fulweiler Show. <laughs>